Okay, now using the same function that we just looked at, finding the Taylor polynomial and uh, Taylor series for the function 1 over 1 minus x, uh, let's go ahead and find the maximum error bound of this fourth degree Taylor polynomial on the interval from negative 1 to 0. So what we're going to do is consider, first of all, the, well, why don't we go ahead and write it in blue up here. We're going to write down the absolute value of r4 of x. This is the remainder. And uh, taking the absolute value will give us the maximum error here. Uh, this is going to be equal to, from our formula, uh, the next derivative. So really, it's the next term, if you will. So the fifth derivative of f at some value of z, some value of x, uh, which is, we're going to call z, um, over 5 factorial times x minus 0, or just simply x to the fifth. Now this value of z is somewhere between x and the value that we centered about, which was 0. Maybe I should, well, we should, we should know that, but I don't know that I necessarily have to make you write that every time here. So now what we need to do is figure out what the fifth derivative of the function f is. So I wrote I brought down the fourth derivative that we'd calculated above right here, and we can now go ahead and calculate the fifth derivative of f at x, which here, if you use the form that's, well, essentially here, if you get rid of the negative signs, it's just positive 24 times 1 minus x to the negative fifth, multiplying by negative 5, uh, or really multiplying, yeah, through by negative 5, you end up with a negative 120 times 1 minus x to the negative 6 times negative 1, which simplifies to 120, positive 120, over 1 minus x to the 6th. OK, so what we need to do is figure out what uh, this is going to look like. And if we go ahead and plug it into our error formula over here, what we have on top is 120 over 1 minus z to the 6th times, well, over 5 factorial times x to the 5th. Now, what we want to do is figure out the bound on that, uh, uh, this part, this f of z part, or f, fifth derivative of f at z part. And so what we want to think about is what is that function doing as we go from, well, on the interval from negative 1 to 0. And it turns out, because this is a 1 minus z, um, that if you think about what's going on here, you actually are increasing on this interval. Um, you got to think about that a little bit. But because we're approaching a discontinuity from the left side here, um, you're going to have it going up um, higher and higher here. So what we want to do is um, write that down down here. So absolute value of 120 over 1 minus z to the sixth power is increasing on the interval from negative 1 to 0. So its maximum value is at the right endpoint of the interval. OK, that means that um, the absolute value of 120 over 1 minus z to the sixth is less than or equal to uh, at the right endpoint that would be at zero. You're going to get one on the bottom, so you end up with less than or equal to 120. In case you wonder um, why I know or how I know this is an increasing function, consider that every derivative so far has ended up being a positive value. Um, 
at least on the interval that we're dealing with here. Um, when you subtract a negative, it's going to become a positive value in the denominator. And even if it were an odd power, which the next one would be, the derivative of this one would be uh, have an odd power, um, we still are going to have a positive derivative of this function. And so we know it's going to be increasing. So you can look at the graph of it as well. I'm not going to make you, make you <laughs> write down the um, derivative here to show that it's decreasing or increasing, although it would be very helpful to show sometimes, and I certainly would encourage you to do so, uh, both for your own peace of mind and also for clarity's sake. So let's go ahead and, and replace this value down in the expression up here, uh, replace the expression with 120, and proceed with this comparison. So what we're going to do is maybe copy what we've got up here down below. So let me select that and copy it down below. Maybe I'll just take that piece. Bring it down here. And now what we can do is show that that is um, uh, less than or equal to replacing that whole thing with just 120 over 5 factorial, which happens to be 120 as well, x to the fifth. Okay, I'm just going to put equals here and just rewrite that now as just x to the fifth. The 120s cancel out. And we find that the error bound is actually fully dependent upon x and um, will be able to indicate what that error, maximum error will be based on the x value we choose. So if we wanted to find out what the maximum error would be at negative 0.5, for example, we would end up plugging in 0.5 here, and it would give us back 0.5 to the fifth. Um, or in that case, let's see what that would be. 0.5 to the fifth is 0 0.03125, and that would be the uh, estimate of the absolute error at 0.5. Uh, if you plugged it into this function, or negative 0.5, it would be the same because the absolute value that's being taken, it would give us the same estimate of the absolute error of both 0.5 and negative 0.5 in this situation. Now, we're being asked here for something more. We're, we're being asked for the maximum error bound um, for this function, this polynomial, fourth degree Taylor polynomial, on the interval from negative 1 to 0. So we've got to think about where does x to the fifth, or actually, not just x to the fifth, but in this case, the absolute value of x to the fifth have its maximum value. Now, in order to think about that, and maybe I should put here less than or equal to right away, but in order to think about that, we've got to know what the absolute value of x to the fifth is doing on the interval from negative 1 to 0. And if you think about it, um, it's going to have a value of, at negative 1 of negative 1, the absolute value of negative 1 is, is 1. As you go towards 0, you're eventually going to get 0. And so you're actually going to see that this is decreasing. So you could say this decreases on the interval from negative 1 to 0. So its maximum value is at its left endpoint. So in this case, we can say that uh, this will be on this interval less than or equal to, putting negative 1 in there, we're going to end up with a 1. So maybe I should put in there um, what we've done. Um, let me create the absolute values, negative 1 to the fifth, which equals 1. So this is on the interval from negative 1 to 0. That we're going to be able to specify the maximum error bound there is 1. Not a very impressive um, error bound. Um, I guess it's better than it could be. But turns out, no matter <laughs> how many terms we take, we're always going to have an error that's fairly large at 1. Um, if we wanted to go from uh, somewhere closer than negative 1 to 0, we'd actually get, mu get much better, we'll see, uh, because of the power that's involved here. Uh, if you increase this power, 
and you have something between negative 1 and positive 1, you're going to get something that's quite can be made quite small if this power is big enough. But 1 and negative 1 will both give us an estimate of 1 every time here, an error bound of 1 every time, no matter how many terms we take uh, in this uh, Taylor series or in the Taylor polynomial. And as we talked about before, that's an indication that we've got a, a bit of a problem there at 1 and negative 1 and beyond, really, in either direction. Um, at approximating this, well, giving a value for this function 1 over 1 minus x. All right, um, hopefully this was a helpful example, and it's giving you another one to look at. Um, we do need to justify both of the comparisons we make. Uh, up here, we used this uh, statement showing that this function was increasing on the interval um, to justify this inequality. And down here, we were able to use this statement to justify uh, the inequality we, we made right here. So we need to justify each of those inequalities steps in order to show um, uh, why we know that it's going in that direction. Okay, thank you very much.